Hey, Miko. Um, I guess my understanding was there was you guys had some sort of say in whether or vote and whether or not to to play tonight. Can you kind of walk me through that decision and how you guys reached the choice to play? Uh, yeah, no, there's there's no vote. Uh, we we came to play a hockey game here. Obviously, it was a uh, kind of questions in the air uh, during the day because guys were were dropping, but uh, we had enough guys to play a hockey game, and and uh, that's what we did. So it's pretty simple. Other questions for Miko? If uh, if I guess like players had decided you you weren't comfortable to play, would you have been able to postpone it or something else? We didn't even think about it because we came to play a hockey game, like I said. Gotcha. What did um What do you think of Pablo Franco's return? I think he was good. I think he was. He looked sharp. He made some big saves. You know, tough couple of bounces. You can't do can't do anything. I think we had a couple of defensive breakdowns. You know, they have good players. They get in the inside the dots and in the hash marks. So so they could score, uh, like we saw in the third period on Yo Yossi's goal, but. Uh, but yeah, I think he looks sharp, and uh, it's nice to have him back. Obviously, Kate Shefty, the Gazette. Do you have any thoughts about how the Predators played through their own uh, undermanned issues and how they shut down momentum um, at different points during the game? Yeah, well, they had a full not lineup, at least. So, so, uh, but yeah, they did a very good team. They've been in a hot streak lately. I think they have six in a row now so they're doing things right and keeping it tight defending well so so uh it was a tough grind for us but now we just have to bounce back right away last one here for miko peter Baugh, the athletic yeah miko you mentioned that like they obviously had a full lineup is there any frustration about not having like salary cap relief for a taxi squad so that you guys can can not have to play shorthanded well, yeah, it's it's tough. Like nobody can predict that this this could happen. You know, we had a full lineup when we left the Den we left from Denver. So, and then uh, guys were dropping today. So uh, it's a tough bounce, and uh, it's no excuses. We still had a we still have good teams, even though we have three lines or and five D or something like that. So, so uh, uh, no excuses, you know. Uh, but hopefully, next game we can get some guys back again. All right, thank you, Miko. I will take questions for Avalanche goaltender Pavel Francos. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hi, Pavel. Obviously, kind of a, a weird day today, but how did you, once you got on the ice and in the game action, how did you feel it went for you? I mean, I felt pretty good. They they had some shots in the start, which uh, helped me, uh, you know, like just get the feeling, uh, get in the game. And uh, I think we played, we played pretty good in the first period. We had some chances and, um, uh, uh, even with this uh, tough situation, we handled it pretty well. Kate Shefty, the Gazette. Uh, at what point in the day did you find out that you were starting and what was your reaction to that? I mean, uh, yeah, we found out that uh, Darcy had a positive test like uh, one hour and 30 minutes before the puck drop. So it was a kind of a surprise, but uh, to be honest, I, I prepared for this game like I like I was playing since the morning. And uh, in this COVID world, you have to, you know, like consider every every possible option. So I, I was preparing like I was playing since the morning. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, what was it just, uh, I guess, your emotions getting back and being able to play in an NHL game again? It's been since, I think, August 2020 that you were able to get an NHL action. Yeah, I mean, it felt great just to, you know, step on the ice, uh, play in this uh, beautiful arena in front of a great crowd. So uh, for sure, something something special after such a long time. I just I just wish uh, we won this game. That would that would make everything so much better. Last one here for Pavel, Kate Shefty, the Gazette. How did your uh, two weeks with the Eagles uh, prepare you for tonight? I mean, uh, it, I think it really helped me to get into the game rhythm. I played two back-to-backs in uh, in two weeks, four games total. So it was a good of good workload, and we had some good practices during those two weeks. So it was it was uh, really helpful for me to get back on the ice here. All right, thank you, Pavel. Thank you very much. I will take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar. 
Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Jared. Um, to start, I guess, after you, you got the positive test from Kemper and Kale, was there an option to postpone this game or not play it? Um, yeah, I would say likely, but we're all here ready to play. And, you know, we're, we're already basically dressed when we're getting those uh, results back. So um, we're getting ready as a group and things were changing by the minute because we were getting guys pulled out of our room, you know, five, five thirty, six, six thirty. So, um, you know, all of our guys are here and ready to play. Like we were preparing for this game for two days. So, um, for us, it, it wasn't really much of an option. And then with, with the, I guess, timeline, when did you find out about, um, Berkey and, and JT and when did you find out about Kale and Darcy? Berkey yesterday, um, comp for this morning, uh, Kemp's at five something, uh, Kale at six something, you know, that's kind of the timeline that we were still getting test results back at 6.30 and um, we were here and most guys were tested by four o'clock around four o'clock and then on the second bus 4 30. Were those all like rapid tests that you were getting back immediately? Yes well gotcha. I wouldn't say immediately. Yeah. Kate Shefty the Gazette. I'm fully clear uh, was that option communicated to you to cancel the game or postpone the game? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, and um, could you could you describe a little more of the communication? Like, did you uh, did you meet as a team and discuss this? I just went to our players and said, "Hey, what do you what do you guys want to do?" And um, like I said, we we're here to play a game. They were shorthanded. We were shorthanded. But you know, we don't we we're not using COVID as an excuse. We're here to win a hockey game. We have plenty of capable bodies in the lineup. Peter Baugh, the Athletic. I, I'm not asking for like an excuse or anything like that, but last year there's the taxi squad that you could pull guys up from. Tonight you had to play with, I think like 17, 17 guys. Is there any frustration as the coach not having that option or cap relief to, to allow you to have a full lineup? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the way this is playing out, I don't know that you need a full taxi squad because American League's playing. They're playing a full full uh, schedule. But, I mean, I'm assuming that there's a lot of teams in the same boat. When you're running against the cap and then you lose, you know, three, four, five, six players to COVID, it's tough to fill it all in where you're, where you're you know, fielding a roster. Um when it comes to the cap, but I'm not, I'm not uh, expert on all the ins and outs with that. Like today, th there wouldn't have been an option anyway for us because we're here and we're here with enough bodies to play and we're, we're getting tested and we're getting tested the night of the game to see if our guys can play when we had a full roster coming into it and we end up four short for a while and three short and you know, we're getting these results the night of the game and all of our guys are healthy and ready to go. Kale's healthy and ready to go. Taser's healthy and ready to go. Kemper's healthy and ready to go. Jack Johnson was too. He got a, te got a positive or uh, negative test back after he tested positive tonight and joined this middle of the first period. They're all sitting here ready to play. So, I mean, if we're going to keep testing healthy players, then we're going to we're going to keep getting some results that we don't like and players are going to be sitting when they're ready to play. Last two here for Jared, Kate Shefty, the Gazette. I think of Francis and his uh, first regular season game in almost a year and a half. Yeah. And I, I thought he was, I thought he was great. You know, I would say he'd probably want the first one back. I would like to see a save on that one as a wrist shot from boards high in the zone goes through some traffic but it wasn't a full screen it kind of squeaks through as I think he picked it up late and it squeaks through his arm and his body seven hole 
Um, but I mean, they had some good scoring chances tonight. They had the, the sequence of five on three. I think they had three straight power plays in the second period where he makes big saves. I mean, he came up with a lot of nice saves and looked strong and athletic and played hard and competed. And I mean, that's all you can ask from some of the um, mistakes we made. Um, put him in tough situations and, and he, he made some big saves for us. I would say that was a, a pretty good outing for him on, on, on this night and, and uh, hopefully, and, and I'm, I'm sure that he'll, he'll only get better. Last one here, Peter Baugh, the athletic. Yeah, Jared, I'm, I'm sorry to, I know these aren't fun questions to answer, but is there any chance that these are like false positive tests or like, could any of these guys come back sooner than the like after Christmas day that Taves has? Well, they're all not symptomatic, so I guess they have the option to test out of it, if I'm, if I'm still understanding that right. So I'm hoping that they can come back sooner, yes. All right, thank you, Jared. Yeah, thanks.